Welcome to uh, the webinar with uh, today. It's getting started with digital dangers. Um, thanks for all coming uh, in this huge amount of numbers. Really good to see there's a lot of interest in this uh, current topic. Um, we would like to start um, directly actually um, with an introduction of myself for the ones who haven't been introduced to myself or in person. My name is Jeroen Kleinsma. I'm a digital specialist and a dental technician myself uh, for the company Dental Access. Um, I just started last year and it's been a great challenge for me and a great experience that's to see how much digital is already going on, especially on the denture side. Um, I would like to directly start with um, our digital dentures agenda. Um, like I just did, I did the introduction. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about clinical and the lab stages, and there's a big difference in that those two. Uh, some treatment variations, so how we can have less uh, patient visits. Um, I'm going to talk about the basics, the manufacturing, and post-processing. Um, if there are any questions, I would love to answer them at the end of the entire webinar. Um, so nobody gets really distracted. I can like, focus on the questions myself also and give you the best answers we can. So let's start with clinical and lab stages. Um, we got, of course, the clinical visits um, where you do your scans, your impressions, you do uh, your try-ins, everything. We got the lab side where the information comes in. We do the designing and the manufacturing. I go through them step by step. And it all merges very nice together, actually. Um, of course, the first is the clinical visit. Uh, everything with the purple outline is, by the way, clinical site. Everything with the green outline is the uh, laboratory site. Um, so we start with impressions and uh, registration. That information goes to the lab uh, to do the design, the fabrication of a try in danger. That goes back to the clinical site. We're going to check the try-in, check the setup, if that's okay. And if that's okay, we can basically adjust the setup if we need to have some small changes, or we can go in creating the final denture immediately. If we have to adjust some uh, setup, um, we do the we check the adjustments in the mouth. It goes back to the uh, to the laboratory and we're going to create the final danger. That's creating final danger in this step. If everything is everything is finished, nicely polished, nicely, it looks okay, we send it back and hopefully, really, we're going for that one, is a happy client. It sounds a little bit corny, of course, but um, that is in the end what we're all doing for happy patients, patients who can really uh, have the benefits of a good fitting and good uh, working danger. Um, I would love to talk to you a little bit about treatment variations, and this is just a small selection. There are many possibilities, uh, but these are the most common we see overall. Um, we got a three, four visit treatment. That's the normal treatment, basically a little bit the step I just previously mentioned. We got a two visit treatments. That's basically duplicating an existing danger, the DED treatment, and we got the PSTD, that's the post-surgical temporary danger. I go step by step. So we've got the three to four visit treatments. In the first treatment, the uh, patient is coming in, we say, okay, we do the primary impression. Primary impression can be all for a custom tray or directly for a try-in. Um, we can do that even intraoral. Um, I'm going through all these steps a little bit later, but it just gives you a little bit of um, uh, pre-information. Let's call it like that. So, like I said, the first treatment, the first clinical visit will be a primary impression for a custom tray or directly for a try-in um, danger. Um, if it's for a custom tray on the lab, the custom tray will be made, will be sent back to the clinical site. We are going to do the secondary impression and a more accurate one and that's directly for the try-in. So here we have a nice picture of creating a custom tray. And 
present this, the third, uh, second or third clinical visit that will be trying the try-in. Um, the try-in is just printed in a biocompatible material that's allowed for a short-term or basically temporary placement. Um, it's going to be fitted, adjusted where needed, um, sent back to the lab. If all the information is correct, we can directly go into production. So the third or the fourth clinical visit will directly be your final danger. Uh, here we have a nice picture, finished danger with a digital side on it. So the other one we have is, like I mentioned, the DED, the duplicating existing danger. It was a while possible, but it was very complicated to do. Uh, especially in the last update of 3 shape they created a new function that's the copy danger that makes it a lot easier. So what you have, you have an existing danger. Look at the picture on the left side. Uh, it's basically a wash impression being done with it. That's going to the lab. It's going to be scanned. Um, can even be scanned white with an intraoral scanner, to be honest. Um, loaded into the software. It's going to select it. What are the teeth? So it separates basically the teeth from the base. We can go directly into manufacturing. It's a quite easy process. Um, so we only have two clinical visits, basically. The first one is patient is coming. We do a reline slash wash impression. Um, that's going to be scanned. The second time the patient comes back, it's already the final danger because it's an ex exact copy of the existing danger. Then we have the two visit treatments, the PSTD. That's the post-surgical temporary danger. Um, the first clinical visit is an intraoral scan or an analog impression. Very simple, these two. Uh, it goes to the lab uh, with the, the files being digitalized on the system. Uh, we're going to do a digital extraction of the teeth. And then we're going to design on top of that extracted area, actually. We're going to create a new denture. And that denture is going to just be an immediate denture. Um, and um, directly, when, the, uh, when it's finished, it goes back to the, lab, uh, to the clinic, sorry. It goes back to the clinic. And then the, uh, in the second clinical visit, the ex extraction of the teeth will really happen in real time. Uh, and then placement of the immediate danger. So patient doesn't walk around for long term uh, without anything. There's, see, those are the three main steps we see. There are, like I said, the many procedures possible. These are the main common ones. Um, and, and there we have a nice picture of a temporary and immediate danger. So what do I need to have? Uh, there are some key ingredients you need, even in, like you do cooking, you need some key basic ingredients to have a good outcome. One of the things is we need to know what are the patient's expectations and what is all the information. Um, uh, what, what does the patient want? Does he have diastema or anything? That still needs to be, that information is very important, especially for uh, a laboratory site who's going to set up a danger. Uh, we need good impressions, perfect impressions, analog or digital. Um, none of us are magicians. Uh, we wish. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's impossible. So we need good information to work uh, on something perfect and get a good outcome. Um, something else we need is the vertical dimension and the markers. Uh, where's the lip line and everything, media line, uh, all those information, all that information is very important. Um, what else do we need is the right advice. Um, there are so many uh, companies with workflows, closed, open, uh, saying one system is better as the other. It doesn't really work like that. It's for every clinical site, every lab site, it's different how you want to work, what you feel comfortable with, what works for you. Um, we as dental experts are very uh, fan of being open uh, because there are mo multiple components we can combine together and make a seamless workflow. Uh, all that with that gives you the most amount of freedom. So you're not locked into only this material, only that equipment, only, you get my point. Um, so we want to stay open. So the right advice is very important. Um, like I just said also the right equipment, correct equipment. You need correct equipment that works for you, that you feel comfortable working with. It's easy to work with, easy to maintain. Um, 
and that the running costs are not that too high because that's also you can have the most beautiful equipment but also be aware that can be having more expensive costs maintenance side think of we all want to drive a ferrari but if we want to drive a ferrari we also have a high uh, maintenance bill um what is very important and this is a discussion that goes on for many years is uh, approved materials uh, not in every country uh, or every part of the world the right materials are uh, approved. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit longer. So even though people say everything, do your own study. Make sure that the equipment you're going to work with, or especially the materials you're going to work with, that they are approved. Uh, it is so important. In the end, it's your responsibility what you send back to your clinic or send back to the patient. Um, you are responsible for that. Another part is the right support. Um, in the end, everything that's digital still can go wrong. Like the same with manual. You need the right support. You need a partner who can understand you and support you in the best way. Um, so that is something I really would love to give you as extra information. Um, but what do you need to understand to start? Um, there are different aspects in going digital. One of them is CAT. And I'm going to talk a, li a little bit more about CAT. I'm going to talk about all these steps. Uh, computer added design. Then we've got the CAM, computer aided manufacturing. Um, there is a third topic, and that is a topic that a lot of people don't think about. Is um, And I'm going to show it you now. It's computer aided engineering. Um, even though you have your system all up and running, um, you want something different. You want a different uh, uh, workflow. You want a different uh, strategy. Uh, your machine must do something different because you think something goes better in that way. Changing those things, it's called the engineering side. Um, so that takes quite some knowledge, especially from your uh, partner you work with, uh, to get the right settings for you. Uh, so that is, you have your, Design, your manufacturing, and basically on the back side, the engineering. Um, I'm going to go now a little bit through CAT because what is CAT and what do you need with that? The equipment for CAT is, um, like I said, we like it open and optional because if you start with digital dentistry, digital dentures, exactly, um, you don't have to go from all the way beginning all the way to the end immediately you can do it step by step integrating uh, all your steps and getting familiar with every step because if you do everything from the beginning immediately full pool it's not all everyone who can enjoy everything the best because you have a lot to learn it's a learning curve um so that's why i always say keep it optional step by step upgrade yourself into the next step um, so what do we need first? We need to have a desktop 3D scanner to scan your impressions or the models. These ones. Uh, like I said, we're not bonded to one brand. I just keep some nice pictures, some nice brands um, we like to work with and it's just open systems. Um, so we need a laboratory scanner, desktop scanner, or, and even maybe, and we go with an uh, intraoral scanner. So we can directly scan that one. Um, we need a computer with the right amount of specs because um, a CAT program is a 3D program. A 3D program needs quite some computer um, calculations. It, it takes some effort on your computer. So make sure you have a right computer. There's nothing more annoying then you have the nicest equipment, you have the nicest uh, design software, but your computer cannot uh, keep up. It takes too long, you have to wait all the time. You lose a lot of time and it's a lot of frustration. So make sure invest in a good computer. That also optimizes your entire workflow. And if you have an optimized workflow, in the end, it reduces your costs. Um, what else do we need? We need to have a CAT design program. Uh, with a licensed dongle. Uh, um, the two major uh, programs you have at the moment are FreeShape and ExoCAD. They, those are really big in doing digital dangers. Um, 
The next step we have is the manufacturing. Um, later on, I'm going to even in more details, but it's just what, uh, more an overview of what you will need. Um, the equipment for the CAM, again, open and optional, is you need the right computer with minimal specs. Even though you, if you do the calculation um, for what you have designed, you don't want to wait that long. Then you need an, uh, a CAM program, a nesting program with a license number. Top one is, for example, for the Asiga 3D printing. The bottom one is the mailbox is for a milling. Uh, you, so it depends on how you manufacture, what kind of software you need. And that all comes with your manufacturing uh, equipment. Um, one of the ways to manufacture it after you have designed your danger is going into 3D printing with an approved material, of course. Uh, an example, a SEGA build tray, your denture bases in a nice pink uh, uh, resin. Looks really good. It, it's the future. Um, and it's a different way in manufacturing. Another option is that we do uh, already very largely worldwide is 3D milling. Two types of uh, milling machines over here. Um, this roller machine, this an Emus Icon machine, both of them with loader. Each of those machines have benefits. There are even other machines, other milling machines on the market that are really suitable. Uh, it all depends what works for you the best. Um, so you need, like I said, you need a 3D milling machine, you need a 5X uh, machine, and that's suitable for PMMA. There are smaller machines on the market, but if they don't have the right internal specs, please forget it. Uh, and PMMA is still one of the hardest materials to mill for long term. If you're doing a lot of PMMA, it is a lot of wear and tear on your machine. So you need a good machine. Um, so we have the steps now already. We had the CAM side, uh, we had the CAT side. Uh, the engineering side is more on uh, hey, your partner side. Um, in the end, I want to say digital dangers are not difficult. Just stay open-minded and embrace technology. Don't expect that within a week you can create the best there is. It takes time. Even when you do it traditionally, it takes time to get to a certain point. Train yourself, invest the time, especially now. Um, it gives, unfortunately, the current situation, but it gives us a little bit more time to train ourselves. And uh, there are some benefits to that, of course. Um, so please embrace everything and give it a time. Don't start with immediate everything. If you're not comfortable with that, just step by step. Um, so if we're going into after designing an, um, a beautiful denture, um, we have to think about how are we going to produce it? Um, are we using car teeth? That is still very common uh, in the, basically all of our design software. We still have the option to work with car teeth. Or are we going into custom teeth? Custom teeth is we're going to design uh, our own teeth, our own shape. We're going to uh, change a lot of things with how we want it. We can do occlusal alterations. We can have intersecting teeth, all that type. Um, but we're going to make them ourselves. We're going to 3D print them. We're going to mill them. So we have to think about before we start designing and, make, and doing everything, what are we going to use? Because that information we have to put in the system before we're going to start. Um, if I'm going with car teeth, I'm a little bit more limited in uh, my designs. Uh, if I work with car teeth, everyone is familiar with these strips. Uh, they all have a perfect standard balance. And most of them is a lingualized occlusion, 10 degrees. Um, but if we're de designing with them, we cannot do so much in our uh, movement or in our design because I cannot make any occlusal alterations because how is the computer going to know that? I'm not cutting them away like that or printing them less. Um, that's not possible because you're using car teeth. Um, also, it's very important when you're using car teeth, if you put them uh, in the denture base, and uh, that can be you milled or printed the denture base, put your teeth in, bond them, or uh, you do traditional flasking, that's even a possibility. Um, you have to manually, or uh, by milling by a computer system, uh, grind away the bottom 
uh, the filling surface basically, the surface site. Um, so you have to think about getting those things away. Um, and everything you want to do occlusal, uh, you have to do in your post-processing. In post-processing in this way is basically in your articulator, clap it down and uh, put occlusal paper in between and see where you need to grind away. If I'm using custom teeth in my design, I can do whatever I feel like. Uh, we already have a perfect standard balance in the original state because that's given by the manufacturer of the teeth in the dental in the uh, teeth library. We have full freedom in movement, full freedom in design. Uh, it is strong as we can select it doing it in one bridge. Uh, we can also make separate bridges, for example, uh, from uh, three to three, six unit bridge, and do the uh, posterior in separate bridges. Um, because if it's uh, nested basically or created as a bridge, you can imagine that it's more difficult to push it out. Let me say, for example, I got a denture over here. Everyone can see it, hopefully. Um, if it's just a single teeth, a car teeth, it's more easy to pull out. If you have your normal repairs, that one breaks out. Uh, that's Quite common. If it's an entire bridge, you can imagine if I push it, yeah, it's much more difficult to uh, break it out. So it's a, it's a little bit stronger. Uh, that's why I say strong as one bridge. Uh, it saves you some time in post processing because your occlusal alterations are already done. You don't have to grind anything away. It directly fits in your base. And it's much cheaper to produce. Uh, instead of buying an entire set of card teeth, uh, what can add up quite well, especially if you have the premium lines, for example. Um, it is, it's much more, it's, yeah, just much more cost. Uh, so it's much more cost effective if you can produce your own teeth like that. Um, like I said, we're going to go through all the steps a little bit. And one of the steps is setting up a digital danger case. Uh, in this case, I got a beautiful picture of the uh, tree shape software. Um, it doesn't really matter, it just gives you a clear idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to select uh, the teeth on the required arch. Um, also, we uh, can link everything as a bridge, like I said before. We select the gingiva and then we're going to select if we're going to uh, do a monoblock, like we all know, huh? probably our try-ins. This is the try-in. I got even an upper and a lower as a try-in. So there we already decide if we're going to select a monoblock and if how we're going to produce. Are we going to reduce our teeth uh, on the uh, surgical side or are we going to work with stock teeth? All those things. So then we have to go, after we set up our Oroform, we have to go into our scanning. How are we going to generate the files? How do we want to scan for danger? Interoral impression or scanning the danger? Like I said, we can do generate files by interoral scanning um, or scanning the impression directly. Um, there's a good study about that, especially uh, scanning edentulous patients by Dr. Lucio Loruso. Um, he did a lot of studies about that one, and he gives a lot of good information about the right scanning strategy, what to think about, uh, how to work with it. Um, like I said, we got the impression scan. Uh, so we had an impression, we're going to scan that one with the intraoral scanner. Um, or we have our uh, existing danger with a wash impression, or we can scan how it is actually if it's still okay. Another one to scan is to have a desktop scanner. Uh, again, same with the equipment list. What do what do we need? Um, so this is the desktop scanner. Uh, this one scans, for example, two uh, impressions at the same time. Um, you can have your alginate or your uh, normal impression scan uh, out of out of an imp in a custom tray or however you have those files, scan them. You can uh, even uh, create your uh, models, scan your models. 
And uh, if you have an existing denture, uh, scan uh, that one with your wash impression or as the denture itself. Then we're coming by the design. Um, the, like I said before, there are two software packages that are really good do the designing. That's the tree shape and the extra cut. Um, both systems has their benefits, both system, it all depends. Basically, it depends on your workflow and what works for you. How do you want to work? Um, both have great opportunities in creating the most beautiful uh, dangers. Um, later on, if everyone likes, um, after this webinar, I'm going to stay on. Uh, I can do a small uh, demonstration um, in designing a danger. Uh, so that, but I'll do that at the end. Um, we have our manufacturing by CAM. Um, like I said before, we can mill the generated digital files or we can also print them. And we all have to do post-processing. Um, we have to think about during this construction is what works for me, what is in balance. So what works for me, what works for you, of course. Um, Milling is a very uh, sustained solution. It's already on the market for a long time. Um, it is very a strong, very good uh, results. Um, but the cost can be, can be a little bit higher. If we go into printing, um, it is a new technique. It has still has its flaws, but it is a little bit, uh, first of all, faster and can be more cost effective. So it all depends on how you want to work and what you find important. Um, and that's something you have to basically have to talk with your uh, provider, what, like what works for you. Um, I'm going to a little bit through the manufacturing a little bit myself. Like I said, we have the milling machines. Uh, so we have multiple options um, how you can produce. You can uh, mill the base out of a pink PMMA puck, um, average milling times is three to four hours. It all depends on your system. Uh, but like you see um, on the right picture, you see those nice uh, lines. That is basically how your milling burr moves over your material. And it, every time it goes over the material, it takes a little bit away. Um, so that's one option. Um, we can mill the teeth. Uh, mill them as, and uh, for example, I got one over here that is a full arch, a full bridge, just milled out of a multi layered PMMA. Uh, very aesthetic, very, very nice. Uh, that works really well. Uh, so, if you have milled the base, milled the teeth, you can combine them together. I got a, this is a fully milled danger over here, outside is polished, but the inside, you can still see how shiny it is. It's not polished at all. So it is, you get a really good smooth result. Um, or a mixture. Uh, you can do um, mill just the base and put car teeth in, uh, stick them in. Um, you can just uh, mill the teeth uh, and do an, um, an injection system. Um, so there's a, a lot of possibilities. Manufacturing by 3D printing works actually the same. You can print the base, you can print the teeth or a mixture. Um, what is very important when you do this is that you have a uh, biocompatible material that is CE, FDA or TGA approved. Um, especially for long term, you need to have that. Like I said before, do your own research. Is my material suitable for using long term with my patients uh, and I make it for my clinic with their patients. Uh, so do your research. And what is important that is it's, it's an, a 3D printer with a 385 nanometer wavelength. It's a UV wavelength um, because this uh, wavelength penetrates further into the material so you get a better, um, more solid uh, uh, end product. Um, for example, we got, I got here, this is completely milled, uh, sorry, not milled, printed uh, danger. Um, once we do manufacturing by 3D printing, 
uh, and I've talked a little bit about there is something new we have also on the market, and that is called uh, Ceramco, Ceramco Print Crown Tech. I'm not going to make a commercial thing out of it, but it's just to give you a little bit more information. This is a glass infiltrated uh, resin, and it's really strong. Um, and this one, it is on the market, but not everywhere it is approved yet. So we have Dentiteed, we have the denture base that is all 3D printed. You can even see, you see a little bit translucency on the back of it. It is a really nice material. Um, it's coming out on, on the Australian market uh, really uh, soon and we'll, we should be able to deliver it really soon. Uh, it's by the way really, uh, really strong. Uh, I mentioned before the post-processing. Post-processing is a step that a lot of labs and also clinics are not thinking really clearly about. Uh, I've already invested so much money in my equipment and now I have to get more. Yeah, but what did you, you invest in one part of the equipment? You have to invest in one step. But even if you have the most beautiful equipment, you, you have purchased a milling machine or a 3D printer, cost you over, I don't know, who knows how much. Um, if you are doing the last and the final steps not correctly, your first steps are incorrect immediately. Uh, so take a lot of time and do your research also in how to finish your products. Um, I can't put diesel in a petrol engine. You get problems. It's the same. Um, so think about that. If we're working with um, biocompatible materials that we need to do because we are doing long-term processes in the mouth, we need to have the right equipment. So we also need to clean it very well. Uh, clean the printer project with water or an IPA. It all depends on the material. Most of the time an IPA is a used isopropanol. Um, so it's 90, between 95 and 100% pure alcohol. Uh, again, be very careful with that. Use your uh, all your uh, safety measurements. Wear gloves, wear glasses, wear protective clothes, uh, especially when you're working with a resin. Just be safe with that one. Um, so after it's cleaned, we need to light cure it because even though it comes, for example, after the printing out of the pr uh, printer, it's still not fully cured yet. There is still a rest monomer left. Um, so post um, post processes in a in a, in a suitable uh, machine. Uh, one of the things is, for example, we have a picture on top that is from uh, Autoflash. It's a German made, but it works with nitrogen gas. So it removes all the oxygen in the chamber. Uh, you get a more dense end result, and that's something you need. It works on the right wavelength, so it penetrates, especially the more transparent. Translucent materials better. Uh, so really spend some time on thinking how you want to do your post processing. Finishing your denture. Um, it all depends on how you created your denture. Uh, if you milled, if you printed, uh, if you're doing um, um, what's the word again? Uh, your injection system. Um, just bond them in the right method, method that works with your workflow and with your material compatibility. It's very important that you check that one. You can characterize by any means by using, for example, an optic glaze. Um, you can glaze it, you can, uh, the PMMA materials, you can even uh, stain in every color you like, make it more correct, make it nicer. Uh, a lot of things are possible. And then you can seal or polish the outer surface. Use a pumice, use a sealer from, for example, the optoglaze uh, uh, glaze material itself. So make sure your denture is uh, finished in a proper way. So if we have done that and it's all cleaned, it's all ready to go, um, put a nice invoice with it. Of course, we can't work for free. <laughs> and uh, send it back. And in the end, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for happy patients who can work uh, with a 3D manufactured uh, denture. So um, 
this is basically a quick run through to uh, getting started with digital dangers. Uh, so you, you know, you see, we need the right equipment. We need to have the right workflow that works for you. You need the right partner who can support you. If you get stuck, if there is a problem with your uh, hardware slash software, um, you want to be up and running as soon as possible all the time. And you want your entire workflow work as smooth as possible. So think about it and don't be afraid to ask the, the questions. Um, the right people in the dental companies are trained to do this. They have years of experience in guiding um, clinics and laboratories in their entire workflows. They've been through all those processes, not once, not twice, hundreds of times. Um, so don't be afraid to ask the questions. They're here to help you and support you in the best way. Um, First of all, I would like to thank you for just watching this one. Um, um, I would love to go to some, uh, if there are some questions, I would love to answer them now. And if there are not any questions, I would love to go through you, uh, take you through a small design of a uh, digital venture case that you have a clear idea of what steps needs to be done. Um, if you want to know more about uh, digital workflows and you would love to stay up to date, I would really recommend you to follow our social media um, uh, programs, basically, uh, or Instagram or LinkedIn or Facebook, uh, our newsletter. Uh, we post very often new, um, new workflows, new um, features about equipment and everything. If you want to stay up to date, please follow us or follow our channels. So for this one, I would say thank you very much um, for following this one. Um, I am looking. I don't see, to be honest, any questions. So till now, thank you very much for that one. And I have opened uh, here. Um, in this case, a tree shape. I have, I've already had one prepared, uh, but the workflows are quite similar if you're working with another CAT program. Um, so as soon as we created our order, we selected how we, what we want to make, how we want to make it. Um, we come directly, basically, into this uh, step. And what we see here is all our information. Uh, we have our uh, vertical dimension, the white rim, basically, the wet rim. We have our upper model. We have our lower model. And we've put in the information. Here we have to determine the occlusal plane. Um, what is really, really important here is that you directly do from the beginning what is your incisal point? If I don't do the incisal point here correctly, it takes me a lot of time afterwards um, to set all my teeth back in the right position. Even though you can pick them all up at once, it's just unnecessary because I can do it much easier in this step. Only what you do is you select a crucial plane set, three points on the plane. It selects this one. You can even change it a little bit. So when that one is done, we go to our model anal analysis. Wow, difficult word, thank you. <laughs> um, so we have to uh, tell the software what is what. So we see here the maxillary, uh, maxillary points, tuberosity, one, incisive papilla, tuberosity number two, and two canine points. The same with the lower part, retromolar part, central retromolar part, buccal retromolar part, lingual. Those things we all have to tell the software what's what. The next step is basically saying what is the outline? What is the, um, how much do I go vestibular? How much information do I want to go there? This is basically how far your end of a denture goes. I have, for example, um, you should be able to see this one. Um, very thin edges. That's, I just put it in the most deep 
uh, vestibular point. It's very thin. Does it gonna work for long term? Does it fit? No. For example, you've got the MCD system um, and the suck down danger, especially for the lower, of course. Uh, but if you're going right in the vestibular area, you design it the right way, you get a nice outcome. You will see it later in the design. We got the lower jaw boundaries. It's the same. We're gonna select till what extent we want to have our danger. So we're gonna do the calculation. We're gonna do the surveying, the block out. We want as less as possible because if we have less block out, we have a better fit, a better grip. Um, I hear we can't see the screen. Sorry, guys. Can you see the screen now? I'm really sorry. Okay, yeah, it seems like we can we can see it. Sorry for that. I thought it was on. Um, so let me go a little bit back. Sorry for that. So we got the characteristic, characteristic points here, everything, the boundaries. We've done that one, how far we want our danger guys to go. The surveying and the block out. And like I said, we want as much as grip as possible. This is if we want to relieve some more points, um, you know from your experience when you do traditional work, uh, you know what to look for. That is nothing different when you're going into digital. For the lower part, surveying and the block out, I'm just going through these items really quick. I don't, I don't think it really makes sense to. I hope you can see, that's perfect. Okay, so we select, this, this takes a little bit longer, sorry for that one, because that's always uh, and the calculating of the computer. What it does now is it selects uh, basically a teeth library. There are many possibilities in all your CAT uh, systems. Um, there are from a lot of big uh, manufacturers um, like Vita, like Arrayas, um, like Ivoclar, um, they have their libraries. Uh, some of them are free, some of them are paid, and they are updating more and more on the digital libraries. So we're seeing an, um, a change in the entire world that less car teeth are being used and we're going more into a digital. So most times you need to pay a library, you need a dongle for that or any other way. Um, but some of them are really free. Uh, one of them I really like is the new one that's from Fabulous Smiles. Um, I've set up, let me, here you see by the way, this is just a selection of, I haven't even activated all of them. I got some of them, some of them I don't even have. Take that away. I see my standard setup. Remember in the first step, I mentioned that I had to set my occlusal plane. 
here you see that occlusal plane again in the light blue. And my incisal point is directly where I've set it in the first step. So I don't have to do a lot of extra steps. Let me set it up front to make it correct. It's already there. Um, I can go into changes, however I feel like. There is luckily undo buttons. If I am going to manufacture my own teeth, I can even change it. Well, it's not the best change, of course, but hopefully you get my point. And again, I love the undo button. And that's something you don't have traditional. Anything you've done takes you quite some time to redo or adjust again. Not with digital. That makes it really so much easier to do it. It says it goes through the gingiva. I said, I know. In this case, I really don't care much because what I've checked is I want to uh, print or mill my own teeth. So it cuts away anyway on the uh, cervical part. Now I'm coming into the settings of my base, of my base plate. Uh, still the same outline as we've seen before. We can say the base thickness, how much relief there is. And if you're going into milling, you need a drill compensation. Um, all those things, it all depends on how you want to change it. Um, I don't think it makes sense to go into that one now because that's a completely different topic. I go next. Also, this takes a little bit. It has to do, do the calculation. Let's give it a second. And again, we still have to wait. Always, when you wait, it takes a little bit. Don't mind me, I say cheers. It's almost there. You see, there are many steps you can do. So basically, you um, your occlusal plane, you select your boundaries, you select your characteristic points. Um, again, teeth set up your base plate again. So we do the same with the lower part. Select OK, do the calculation. Normally, that goes a little bit faster. Um, so there are many steps you, you, you can do. It's it, and the good thing is about all these software packages, it takes you really by the hand, step by step by step. I hope you can still see it. We got our danger base. We got our upper and lower danger. Because I've selected them as bridges, I want to create a strong one. And these are my connectors. I'm going next. You will see it will connect them as a complete bridge. It's all connected like a bridge, so 
So that makes it strong. We're going to sculpt denture base because that is the step where we do really and the, the final designing. Um, designing is, um, I've seen one of the questions and I would love to directly hang on this one uh, immediately because uh, one of the questions is uh, designing on the computer, how long does an average time a person spend? It, first of all, it all depends on your computer skills, how long you've been working with it and how much alterations you want to do. Some people really like, okay, I, I got a nice vertical dimension. I got all the space I need. I like the teeth set up. It just put them in, finalizing. It can be a matter of literally five to 10 minutes, or you can spend up to 20 minutes. Um, especially in the beginning, it takes you a little bit of time. Don't expect your first engine will be done within 20 minutes. Um, we all wish, um, but it's just not realistic. Um, but an average time, as soon as you are really in the workflows, you know your software, you know how you want to work, what library you feel comfortable with. An average time of 20 minutes of a setup is nothing strange. Um, so yes, it is much faster. And because you don't, if you made a mistake or you ch made a change and you want to undo that, like I said, the undo button, done. So. This is one case I did um, with a lot of extra design. And please, I know there are people who can do much better designs than me, so please don't uh, judge me on my design. <laughs> um, but it gives you just a little bit of a really good idea of what is possible, what is aesthetic possible. The only thing you have to realize is as soon as you're doing a lot of nice alterations, nice uh, nice services like you see here, you see the veins and everything. It is really nice, but if you're going to do that on a milling machine, it takes you much longer in production. Because you have to think about when you have a milling machine, if it only needs to go straight, it's quite okay. But if it needs to go all the way like this, it takes you much and much longer. So the more alterations you do in your uh, designing here, the longer it takes on your milling machine. For 3D printing, it doesn't matter. Um, like I said before, there are also possibilities like doing your uh, post-processing and your uh, characterization with a uh, material like OptiGlaze, for example. You can do there a little bit more. Uh, you, there are so many ways how you can make, really make it function or make it work for you and whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, this is just a really quick setup. Um, here we have the information again. So what I would love to see you, love to show you anyway, is um, going a step further, is how it's going to separate basically the teeth and um, the uh, denture base. Because, yeah, I have to realize if I have a denture base with holes in it, um, am I, yeah, there I can position my teeth, my manufactured teeth. So I'm going to want to show that to you how that looks again. It seems like. And we have still have separation. So my teeth my base, but still there are no deep sockets, but it tells you coupling mechanism. It says, how far do I go into it? And if I now go into manufacturing, free manufacturing, preview, The other one, and so it does for the upper and the lower. Um, like I said, we have those certain steps. So you need your equipment to generate a digital file we can all work on. Yeah? Is it an impression? Is it an intraoral scan? Is it an, uh, a model scan? Uh, 
we uh, create with an intraoral scan or a uh, model scanner. We create a workable file, an STL file. Uh, out of that one, um, we can do the design. Then we design how we want our teeth manufactured. Do we want card teeth or do you want, want to manufacture our own teeth? Out of that point, um, we're going to design the entire denture like we're doing now, and then we can go into manufacturing. Well, software, yeah, it's still running, still coming, still waiting for a final calculation. Always when you want to show something. Um, so there are there are so many possibilities and so many freedom. So again, check when you do your manufacturing if you do it by milling. There are suitable milling machines um, that are really good for these uh, type of dentures. Um, another part is your 3D milling, uh, 3D printing. Sorry, uh, make sure you have the right approved equipment and if you that you have the right um, post processing equipment. That is very very important. The eight percent. 99 and 100. And this is a step I would love to show you guys. This is really when we have to cut out. So now if we basically save the file, we have two separate files. We have a base. And we have the teeth. So if we save this one, uh, we can have multiple outputs. We can a monoblock. Like I showed you guys before, uh, the try-in monoblock it's called. You can use that, place it in the patient's mouth, see what needs to be done. You can even create a wash and a reline impression with that one. Rescan that one, work from there. And we have these split files, the base and the teeth and they combined together will give you your final venture.